What's up, cinema lovers, and welcome to another episode of Two High Cinemas. I am your host, Jerem, and as you may know, here on Two High Cinemas, I like to give my opinion on some of the most popular pieces of cinema in the world. In today's movie, I'm going to be reviewing and running through. It's going to be Batman Forever, starring Val Kilmer, Chris O'Donnell, Jim Carrey, Tommy Lee Jones. Let's get into it. In Gotham City, costume vigilante Batman diffuses a hostage situation orchestrated by an arch criminal known as Two-Face, formerly District Attorney Harvey Dent. Flashbacks reveal that Two-Face was disfigured with acid by mobster Salvatore Moroni, which Batman failed to prevent, causing Dent to develop a split personality. Edward Nigma, an eccentric researcher at Wayne Enterprises, approaches his employer, Bruce Wayne, Batman's secret identity, with an invention that can beam television signals directly into a person's brain. Bruce rejects the device, concerned the technology could manipulate minds. After killing his supervisor and staging it as a suicide, Nigma resigns and plots revenge against Bruce, sending him riddles. Criminal psychologist Dr. Chase Meridian diagnoses Nigma as psychotic. Bruce attends a Haley Circus event with Chase. Bruce asks Chase on a date, but she professes to be romantically interested in Batman instead. Two-Face hijacks the event and threatens to detonate a bomb unless Batman surrenders. Dick Grayson, the youngest member of the Flying Graysons, manages to throw the bomb into the river, but Two-Face kills his family. Bruce persuades the orphan Dick to live at Wayne Manor as his ward, and Dick discovers Bruce is Batman. Determined to avenge his family, Dick demands to join Batman in crime fighting, hoping to kill Two-Face, but Bruce refuses. Dick claims that Bruce does not understand what it is like to lose one's family, but Bruce refutes him. Alluding to the events of the first film in the saga, Bruce contends that the death of the man who killed your family won't make the pain go away. It will only make it worse. This internal struggle as to why Bruce feels compelled to continue as Batman even after the death of the Joker has been giving Bruce nightmares, for which he has been seeing Dr. Meridian. She gives him a Malaysian dream warden, which it is believed helps keep away bad dreams. On that note, don't forget to check out some of our merch options provided by KLB Supply at klbsupply.com. Follow KLB Supply and Two High Cinemas on all social media platforms. Like and subscribe for any updates. And let's get back into it. Nigma, inspired by Two Face, adopts a criminal persona, the Riddler, and allies with Two Face. Two Face agrees to help the Riddler steal production capital to finance Nigma's new company, Nigma Tech. And in exchange, the Riddler promises to help deduce the identity of Batman so Two Face can get revenge. They commit a series of robberies to finance Nigma's new company and help mass produce his brainwave device, the Box, which steals information from users' minds and transfers it to Nigma's, which makes him smarter in the process. At a party hosted by Nigma, an updated and improved version of the Box is revealed that can project fantasies, not just television programs, directly into the human mind. Bruce deduces that if Nigma can project fantasies into the mind, he can also extract thoughts, memories, and information out of the mind. Bruce disables the box and attempts to investigate, but the villains turn on the machine while Bruce is inside. While the box is mapping Bruce's mind, an impatient Two-Face crashes the event in an attempt to draw out Batman. Bruce changes into his suit and as Batman pursues Two-Face through Gotham. In an abandoned subway, he is almost killed by Two-Face, but is saved by Dick. At the urging of his butler and father figure, Alfred, Bruce disguises Batman and visits Chase to profess his feelings for her. However, Chase explains that she has fallen in love with Bruce. As Bruce, he invites her over to Wayne Manor to reveal her his secret identity. However, the Riddler and Two-Face, having discovered Bruce's secret through the box, invade Wayne Manor, assault Alfred, blow up the Batcave, shoot Bruce, and kidnap Chase. As Bruce recovers, he and Alfred deduce that Nigma is the Riddler when they figure out the final clue to his riddle. Bruce sets off to save Chase and fight the Riddler and Two-Face when Dick approaches him in the cave, offering his assistance. Bruce finally accepts Dick as Batman's partner, Robin. At the Riddler's lair inside Nigma Tech headquarters, Robin almost kills Two-Face but spares him, who holds him at gunpoint. The Riddler reveals that Chase and Robin are bound and gagged in tubes above a deadly drop giving Batman the chance to save only one, his love or his partner, and asking if Bruce Wayne and Batman can ever truly coexist. Batman distracts the Riddler with a riddle before destroying the Riddler's brainwave receiver with a battering, flooding the Riddler's mind and disabling him and allowing Batman to rescue both Robin and Chase. 
Two-Face corners them and determines their fate by flipping a coin, but Batman throws a handful of identical coins in the air, causing Two-Face to stumble in confusion and fall to his death. Batman apprehends the Riddler and tells him that he is both Bruce Wayne and Batman, not because he needs to be, but because he chooses to be. Revenge is no longer Batman's all-consuming motivation, and he has come to terms with his duality. Committed to Arkham Asylum, Nygma now exclaims that he is Batman, which leads Chase to remark that he is truly insane. Bruce returns to Malaysian Dream Ward and remarking he no longer needs it. Bruce resumes his crusade as Batman with Robin as his partner. All right, first reactions to the movie. Okay, so it was definitely different from what we got with Batman uh, 1989, what we got with Batman Returns. Uh, they switched up directors, all that. I get it. We got a different kind of Batman. It was definitely different, though. Um, I wasn't really keen on the, like, brighter colors. I know it wasn't that much brighter, but Batman was dark for me. Uh, they brought too many lights into it. Uh, Val Kilmer really wasn't my Batman, but he definitely played a good Bruce Wayne. I ain't even gonna lie. Uh, got introduced to Robin. That was cool. The whole uh, karate folding thing. I, I don't know what the hell that was supposed to be. But um, yeah, I guess that was yeah, that was weird. Uh, but, <laughs> um, it was okay. It was about like third best so far to that little franchise. Um, Jim Carrey was on point. Jim Carrey was my man. Uh, Tommy Lee Jones basically was I don't know, uh, Joker, um, Jack Nicholson's Joker, just tw times 20, like, trying to be, I, I don't know what that, what that was supposed to be with Two-Face, um, wasn't really feeling the movie that much, it, it was okay, it was okay. So now when it comes to the grading, when it comes to comedy, I give it dank, because Jim Carrey had me laughing the whole time, uh, when it comes to drama, I give it mids action. I'll give it mids because it has some really good action scenes and stuff like that. Um, besides just not really being into it, but action was definitely on the mid side. And then when it comes to <laughs> horror, I give it Reggie. And that was my run through and review of today's movie. Please hit the like, subscribe, and comment down below on what you would like me to review next. And for now, smoke you later.